Okay, Richard from Sharpshooting UK here. Um, another rifle um, walkthrough. This is my little Fireball, 1.7 Remington Fireball. Fond of this because it always feels like a bargain. I was shooting HMR, 25 pier shot in the UK, and I was a bit underwhelmed. It, it makes a lot more noise than 2.2 LR. You only get a few more yards in a way, and certainly in the wind, and it's always windy where I'm shooting. It just wasn't that big a step up for the amount of noise it was making and, and the cost. And I thought, I think I need a small centerfire here. I remember how much I liked my little Hornet back in the day. So I looked at loading a centerfire, super frangible, super fast, that would be not a great deal more money and be obviously infinitely more capable. And I came across the 1.7 Fireball. I bought one cheap on a forum and I have never looked back. It is a uh, belting little calibre. Essentially, I can load this for 30 odd P. So it's slightly more expensive than the Hummer, but uh, it's, uh, it's very capable, particularly given that, I'm skip to the ammunition bit. I use the 25 grain VMAX. You will need a one in nine twist. Some guns aren't. You will need a one in nine. But if you've got one, 25 grain VMAX, and you can get them going for, what, 18 grains of powder? You can get them going 37, 50, easy. And that puts you up near 1.7 REM performance, which is, you know, 223 type performance. Certainly ballistically useful um, for, for very very low amount of powder, uh, very um, low fouling, very low recoil, very low noise. It is a beautiful little case. Let's check this little, this little beauty out. Oh, it's a tiny little thing. That. Tiny little thing. It's like a little mini Magnum. 25 gram VMAX doing nearly 4,000 feet per second, you know, 37.50 for 18 grains of powder. Cheap to load, very quiet, good, consistent, strong case. It is a really good little caliber, and you know you you can you can shoot this. Well, if you compare it to the HMR, it's a different world. I mean, uh, you know the the wind difference in say a 15 mile an hour crosswind at 200 yards. It's just a different different kettle of fish. Um, indeed, you know on on a uh, a day when the weather's a bit better you know you you can make shots with these out to you know three four hundred yards if if you know what you're doing and you've you've got your ballistics in order and your wind and you know what you're doing it, it is a center fire and you know rim fire will never compare apart from on on cost um so i never look back it's also fox capable so um you know i if if we're out shooting rabbits and pottering away um you don't have to switch rifles if um if a fox turns up at 200 yards um you know it, it, it's 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 super capable and, and away you go so yeah that that was my um choice behind that while we're just on the ammo front there is a problem with fireball these days in that there's no brass um you, you only ever could use remington brass I prep everything in full, so it, you know Remington brass is absolutely fine. Um, so you know, I, for, for ages I was fine, but now it's really, really hard to find. Uh, to the point where I was considering having to abandon the caliber, um, and I decided that I really didn't want to. So what I did was I got some two two one um, fireball brass and uh, necked it down to twenty Vartag, which which is the same case but uh, twenty cal. And then necked it down from there to 1.7 Fireball, turning at each stage. So, by any standards, a major investment in the brass time-wise. It was a lot of work. But now I've got nice new brass that will keep me going for, you know, another 500 shots. And uh, I'm pleased that I took the time and the effort to do that because I didn't want to give up Fireball because it's such a versatile little high-volume round. So... Um, in the UK, um, that's what I had to do. But, uh, you know, I'm sure there's, there's brass about, but I, I couldn't find any, so that's what I did. And now I'm secure in, in it now because I've got nice new brass, and uh, away we go. So, back to the rifle. Another DM-80, 1.7 specific, ultra quiet. It really moderates well, this. 
um, I often think how much quieter it is than an HMR, so, you know, remarkable. Cat's main appearance, every video she walks through. Um, this is a Remington 700. It is stock, it's the only gun I own that doesn't have a match barrel. Uh, that's because it's spit accurate as it is, it doesn't foul much. It is, um, doesn't lay any copper down. It's fine, I mean, I've often thought about putting a match barrel on it just because I like having match barrels, but um, it would be a waste of money at the moment because it's, uh, you know, well under half a minute, this gun. Um, you know, when I get the, the, the load absolutely spot on, it's um, so accurate you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Um, so I won't go on about it, but uh, <laughs> I've shot some things with this that, uh, that scare my match guns, um, you know, and at decent ranges uh, too, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a good accurate gun. Um, and most importantly, it doesn't uh, move, the POI doesn't move as the barrel heats, which is one of my main um, problems with, with factory barrels. That's uh, something I, I, I can't tolerate, but uh, this doesn't do it, so, so that's good. Um, I put a one-piece rail on it. I always put one-piece rails on. I've just got this idea that it must stiffen the action, so put a little cheap one-piece rail on there. Um, QRW mounts here and uh, as I've said in my video about the 204 Ruger I switched that scope from one to the other which saves me space in my cabinet space in my car space everywhere and of course um, you know the price of a scope night force bench rest hella sharp 832 which is a, a, a really good um, uh, mag range for uh, for vomiting you know you could you can zoom out for 100 yard 100 yard vermin and, and then you can zoom right in for 500 yard vermin not that i do that with this but you know what i mean it's uh it, it, it's got the range that you need a 6 to 24 would have been okay on this as well but you need a nice high mag scope you need turrets that you can dial see my lovely um huge improvement over the stock turrets there i've got some um, custom turret systems labels on there which i specified designed myself on their website get rid of those annoying um turrets that the bench rest is plagued with otherwise it's a superlative scope um, this rifle has not been um, accurized in with regard to the bolt um, and, and the lugways and uh, such like it is it is completely stock it has been professionally recrowned um, and threaded with uh, 14 by 1 I think it is it's got a dual trigger in it um, it's got the uh, I think they're called tactical manufacturing components uh, nine shot magazine which is just an extended plastic floor plate best 25 pounds really is it just works perfectly um, it, it just takes the metal floor plate of the Remington 700 off uh, replace it with one that's you know an inch taller and you get three more rounds in it's absolutely great I've had no problems with it I get eight nine rounds in there simples dual trigger was an extravagance but by god you need a good trigger the end and um, you put a jewel in and it is the end of you worrying about triggers so done um, this is a hoax stock I've had various stocks on this I wanted to keep the weight um, down and the pointability up I use it out of the window uh, you know, the car the truck window you know I need it to be portable but I also wanted it to be stable and I do like it to be grippy as well this gun gets used in all sorts of conditions and none of them nice and um, you know I, I like the hoax they genuinely are non-slip and uh, people said it couldn't be bedded because uh, I bed all my rifles I thought at the end of the day if I drill enough holes in the um, and scrub the inside of the uh, stock out enough the bedding will stick um, so I really went to town when I um when I when I removed the uh, the the, the, the in, in, inside area where the bedding would go, uh, I really went to town roughing it up so that the bedding would stick. I uh, know the bedding stuck. A okay, so that's all bedded. Um, so uh, that that is something that uh, I consider to be very important in in rifles. So I, I've done that. I'll do that. I'll do that myself. Um, Atlas here. Um, say no more. I won't uh, repeat everything I've said before about the Atlas system, but it is what I use and I've used the others um, I like Atlas and the magnificent and in a way you see that's 
just a really really good bipod that you know has lots of versatility and toughness and modularity and yada 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 it's a bipod but that is just a brilliant new product that replaces the rear bag and gives you much more um ability to um hold the back steady and and move uh, move it up and down a, a very great deal much more than a bag ever could and it weighs infinitely less than a bag that at the Saki shop really is progress in my mind so um, yeah love them shoot them on all my rifles got a bag here um which is uh, always a useful thing um and of course my own plug plug a little pump took the nasty remington teardrop off and put a little bit of um one of my wife's sharpshooting uk bolt knobs on which i think looks nice Lots of different designs. Give me a call if you want one. Um, so there we go. That's the Fireball cracking little rifle. Efficient, cheap, deadly, um, quiet. Um, as I say, cheap to load. The 25 grain VMAX has uh, got a hell of a BC. I mean, the BC is 0.23 on those things. And they're doing... I think we in the real world we use 0.22 actually. But still, that's that's real good. Um, and it's doing nearly 4,000 feet per second. I mean, what am I getting? I think, I think my reloader 10 load is <laughs> fly by by the cat. I think my reloader 10 load is um, uh, 38, 30, 38, 40. I mean, super rapid, you know. What's 18 bit grains of powder? It's just hellish efficient. It really is. Uh, I just wish you could get really good brass for it. But uh, if you're prepared to do the prep, what a little calibre. I must say, if I looking at the brass situation now if i had to recommend something in this case i would say just go 20 vartog it's the same brass 221 fireball but it is um just step down to 20 vartog and you're away and then you've got um the huge range of 32 grain and 35 grain um 20 caliber heads to shoot um whereas in this caliber you know, if this 20 grain VMAX doesn't go or you don't have a 1 in 9, you're going to struggle. Whereas the 20 Vartag, which is exactly the same, just as efficient, but shooting the 20 cal heads, you've got, you know, 15 different options, um, including the um, brilliant Nosler 32 grain, um, and the lead-free ones as well, which are um, flat base and uh, slightly higher BC. You've got mega options with 20 Vartag. But I... Um, got a fireball and i absolutely love it and i've had um nothing but pleasure from it this bolt being forward is bothering me um yeah thoroughly recommended so so that's me remy to 700 stock but accurized and um yeah lovely lovely gun hoax stock and uh, bedded night force bench rest on there which is just standard just job done and um 25 grain vmax remington brass these are HBN coated, another video about that. Um, Reloader 10X gives the best velocities. What's not to like? 